Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today's video will be changing out this 100 amp General Electric 100 amp panel and installing a new 200 amp 40 circuit Cutler Hammer BR panel with a main breaker. So because I'm just updating the panel today, uh, the outside disconnect is not required. Same goes for when you just change out the meter. You don't need to have the disconnect. But if you have to change the meter and the panel, then you need to put the disconnect in. That sounds kind of crazy, but that's how we do it here with the Uniform Construction Code in New Jersey. So as you can see here, it's a big uh, rat's nest here of wires. Obviously, they shoehorned in that sub-panel on the side, had to make room for that double pull circuit breaker, so some of the circuits were double-tapped. Well, I shouldn't say double-tapped, they were spliced onto one circuit breaker, which is not a violation. Uh, but they were in desperate need of an upgrade because they're going to be adding a, an electric vehicle circuit uh, And it's the full 60 amp circuit. Well a full 48 amps at 125 percent So we run we install number six copper with a double pole 60 amp circuit breaker for protection for the electric vehicles All right, so I'm wondering why is that holding in well? You're not supposed to do that, but do you see that coarse screw going into the LB right there? What that does is it holds the LB in place, but you're not supposed to drill through there. But I got to admit, I'm guilty of that sometimes too. So once I remove that screw, that panel will come right out if it doesn't fall out. So that panel was held in by the screw that was through the LB. And that's why the panel wouldn't come off the wall until I took that screw out. Then when I took that screw out from the outside, the panel fell to the floor. So anytime you're doing a flush mount panel like this one here, what needs to happen is there's nails from the sheathing blocking where that panel is going to go in. So you need to cut those out. Sometimes you need to trim away some of the sheetrock as well. Now you've seen me doing this before. I'm using this 2x4 to uh, persuade the panel to go into where it's going to be set for the next 50 years. Now, at the end of the day, this, circ this panel actually had 25 circuit breakers. Well, I shouldn't say that. It had 23, and I added two for the electric vehicle, which you'll see briefly at the end of this video. It was very, very hot this day, and uh, my camera actually shut down quite a few times, uh, and I wasn't aware that it did it, just from overheating. Um, so I'm doing this panel here. I rip away whatever sheetrock I need to just to get the work done. Try to rip it away in a nice, neat, workmanlike manner so that I can put it back up <clears throat> after I've made the holes for access for whatever I need to do. Now, this is always disclosed inside my proposal uh, so people know this is happening. Uh, so right there on the bottom right, I'm working on the air conditioning lines, and they ran two number eight twos, and this house was built in 1995. So in 1995, it wasn't uncommon to have a 40-circuit condensing unit um, circuit for the condensing unit, I should say. And so they ran A2, but since then they've upgraded the condensing units on the outside and the minimum circuit ampacity on the, both of the condensers now was 14 amps or 14.6 and the maximum overcurrent protective device is rated for 25 amps. So they got this big giant A2 and I wound up picking up a pair of uh, double pole 25 amp circuit breakers and attached these large A2 conductors to the 25 amp double pole circuit breakers. Uh, the previous circuit breaker that was there and whoever did the condensing unit upgrade uh, left the 30s that were in there from the previous shop or they put the 30s in, and which is wrong. Uh, when you're sizing the air conditioning wiring, it's pretty important you get the right size and sometimes the circuit breaker does not match the size of the conductor attached to it. Uh, that's common for air conditioners and motors. Uh, but if you don't know those code sections or you're unfamiliar with those code sections, you either need to read them or 
have have somebody that knows how to read them uh, explain to you what to do and the proper way to wire those condensing units. I also had to um, drill out at the bottom of the panel to get those circuits uh, into the bottom of the panel because they were coming into the side before. So I had to cut off some of the sheetrock on that side, drill the hole, and I brought the two cables, as you see on the bottom of the panel there, the two black cables. Those are the condensing units. If you like this video so far and you're enjoying the channel, why don't you do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, like this video, and hit the notification bell, and you'll be updated whenever we put out a new video. Whenever we. I say we because it's me and my business, Classic Electric, that puts together these videos. So this is like every other panel change and upgrade that I do. Um, there were some challenges. You can see in that upper left-hand corner, that piece of PVC, that male adapter, that is going out to the pool, which was added a couple years ago. And so that was a little bit of a trick to disconnect that and then reconnect it after the new panel was in. But I was able to manage doing that with a short stubby and a new LB. Well, a modified LB to fit the small short nipple between the lb and the male adapter coming into the top of the panel there it's kind of a pain in the neck there was three circuits in there one i imagine is for a 30 circuit a 30 amp double pole uh, pool panel and another single circuit probably for landscape lights or maybe the convenience receptacle i'm not exactly sure what but i hooked up what was there before and i'm assuming because i didn't check that uh, all the gfci protection is outside by the pool equipment Um, so there, obviously, uh, the surge protective device that's required by the code, although here in New Jersey, I understand that if you're working under the uniform construction code, and this is the rehab code here that has been adopted, that's what I'm doing here is I'm upgrading existing equipment, that it's not required. But I think it's a good idea to give your customer uh, more value when you're installing such an upgrade, such as a 200 amp panel and an EV charger to get that whole house surge protective device in, even though it's not required technically, uh, that's a good deed for your customer. And yes, of course it costs a couple more dollars to have that put in, but I believe it's worth it. And um, anything that's vulnerable to a surge, anything like a uh, microprocessor, anything that's got a microprocessor, it's vulnerable to that surge. So we wanna make sure we do a good grounding system here and uh, we put the surge protection in as well. If you have any questions, please, in the comments about that. We work under mostly what's known as the Uniform Construction Code. And in the description down below, I have a lot of links for more information for all that stuff, including links to JCPNL, PSENG, installation guides, uh, a lot of IEC links if you're interested in becoming an apprentice. A um, lot of information there in the description. So check it out sometime when you can. Now you're gonna see here shortly that I'm installing a couple of circuit breakers down low. I know that I'm going to come into the bottom of the panel here with some three quarter inch PVC for the electric vehicle charger circuit later that I'm going to, going to install later. Uh, but the conductors just barely made it here. So instead of doing any splices, I just go right to the circuit breakers. And those are both of the uh, AC condensing units and the electric vehicle at the bottom of the panel. It does not matter where you pick up these circuit breakers or where you plug them in on the bus bar. You can see I'm tightening up that service entrance cable um, by hand. One time I actually used an impact, uh, not too long ago, probably about six or seven years ago. And when I went to go put the meter in, um, there was a short. And so that arc flash kind of flashed back at me and I'll never forget it, uh, but I'll never make that mistake ever again either. So that kind of stuff we want to do by hand. 
uh, so we don't pinch the insulation on the service entrance conductor and then when we put the meter in it'll splash you with uh, arc flash we don't want to do that uh, I, was, I consider myself very lucky that day that I wasn't injured uh, that's behind me and I, I promise you I'll never make that mistake again so the service entrance conductors consist of three conductors I got two hot which we call in the trade an ungrounded conductor and then of course we have our grounded neutral and here this is the main breaker like i said earlier in the video the exterior disconnect is not required for a panel change only which is all this is i'm not upgrading any of the other service equipment and the uniform construction code says i do not need to put that disconnect in and once you see the outside which you saw at the beginning of the video where the meter is i don't even think there's any room to put a disconnect there so we would have to come up with a whole nother plan so fortunately that's why that rule is in there uh, for existing uh, installations such as this and upgrades so uh, thank god for the rehab subcode here in new jersey again i got a link for that in the description also if you're curious to know what's inside that rehab subcode so there's our terminations for our service entrance conductors So once the inside is done and the circuit breakers are in, now I'm going outside here and the camera actually shuts down because of the heat. Um, but I got to take out the old existing 100 amp supply on the load side of this meter. Uh, I need to open up the knockout a little bit more for a 2 inch connector for the 200 amp service entrance cable. And then uh, once I strip that back, I'll make my connections. But unfortunately, my camera shut off. Uh, I know it said 692 degrees. It was probably only 500 degrees, but it was damn hot. Hey guys, it's Friday. Um, today's June, I think, 21st. And New Jersey's in the middle of a heat wave. It's about 95 degrees right now. And so the GoPro camera kept shutting down, but as you can see, the power's back on. We got our air conditioners going again on the inside, the refrigeration. The beautiful swimming pool is up and running again. Power's been restored. I think the camera cut out, it was too hot. If you look in this area right here, this is where the meter is. I have my camera up against that gas pipe right there. That just shut out. But we made the final attachment here. We got a new service entrance conductor, that one strap. Use this to cover up the old hole that came through. I'm gonna do a little more work down there to fix that up. But the 200 amps is back online and there was no trouble making those connections. I also started doing the electric vehicle circuit, which is a 60 amp three wire circuit. We're hooking up this charge point, electric vehicle supply equipment, electric charger. And as you can see, we got it wired up. Well, we got the cord wired up and we're about, we're about ready to start running uh, three conductors through. We're gonna run two number six, the red to black, and then number 10 green. We're gonna go to this 60 amp circuit. As you can see, the panel's done, and you can see the condo that was run too. So as hot as it was, or hot as it is today, I still had to open up and use the PVC heater. And it was really, really hot.
like we got power looking good to get sinking okay so the label maker kind of broke at the end there I don't know what happened to tape it just gets caught up in there sometimes it's a good label maker did it reach? It did. Beautiful. And we ran our circuit underneath here. And uh, the lady of the house just paired it with the, with the app. And I think she's charging the car. Car's charging? Beautiful. How about that? Charge point. Very nice. Now I got to clean up, which takes me forever. I got to work tomorrow, do some troubleshooting at a friend's house. Where the circuit didn't trip it just stopped working so there's a loose connection someplace i'm not sure where i was there yesterday for about two hours i gotta go back there tomorrow early tomorrow morning and uh find out where the connection came loose got continuity to my ground and neutral all the way back to the panel so we know the circuit is okay and that tells us that we know that it's not a gfci that's tripped either that it's the hot conductor and there's no short, so there's just a broken connection someplace. Somebody made a poor splice and now it's just burned up. So I'm looking forward to cleaning up this giant mess I made here today and uh, having a couple cold ones tonight because it's game six of the Stanley Cup Finals. You know I'm a huge hockey fan. I'm rooting for Florida. Uh, I'm impressed with what Edmonton just did, coming back and bringing it back to Alberta, Canada in Edmonton tonight for game six down three games to none now it's 3-2 so we'll see what happens I'm looking forward to having a few beers and watching that game just <laughs> cranking up the air conditioning so uh, thanks for watching the video and uh, we'll see you next time thanks for watching this video be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one